let's uh, start with my general explanation of everything. Uh, none of this crap matters how leveled it is. Um, I'm using the chronometric set just for the auxiliary power setting uh, to get that up to the cap, uh, which is normally 130, but it raises up to 135 at the hard cap during battle. I uh, got this set um, just for the extra accuracy. Uh, you could stick um, pretty much whatever set you felt like mattered for you in here. This set doesn't really matter that much. Um, just a second Omni. And the most important part of this is the gravimetric photon torpedo. 33% uh, chance to create a basically another gravity well. Uh, and it only lasts for about 10 seconds, though, I think it is. I don't think it says on here specifically, but it's affected by EPG, which is what you're putting all your points into. That's where you get your damage from and your science abilities. Uh, any reinforcement beacon, Kobayashi Maru just for buffs. Red matter capacitor is actually pretty important. That'll give you a subs moderate uh, damage boost uh, for reasons I'll show you in a second. Uh, I run full temporal set. You could run two pieces of the temporal set and then two pieces of another set if you wish. The most important part from this is the 25% damage over time for hazard effects. That's all your anomalies. 25% bonus damage. That's huge. Um, the other abilities are nice. I specifically really like the three set uh, buff. Uh, any basic ensign level ability, just bam, bonus control and drain. Uh, the drain is going to affect your Titan's Rift. The uh, control is going to affect most of your anomalies. They have some kind of control effect. And the Temporal Fracture is okay. It's not great, but uh, there's no other single piece that I really wanted to take the time to throw on there. So uh, For the shield, I put on double resist all because why would you put anything else on there? <laughs> um, cap times three because... Uh, you're going to have probably no shield restoring abilities on there, so uh, you want a high cap. Uh, the deflector, uh, shield and hull cap, again, with aux power, uh, fantastic uh, deflector all around. Um, for the secondary deflector, you can either go with deteriorating, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal if you're running majority drain abilities. Uh, I am running majority uh, exotic abilities, so I want the uh, inhibiting deflector, because uh, the inhibiting deflector gives you that uh, bonus radiation explosion after four seconds of being hit by any control ability. Uh, and then the sensor analysis, of course, damage buff plus 20%. For the uh, impulse engines, those, you know, not not really huge. Uh, it does give you plus five weapon power setting, which is uh, important uh, for reasons I'll explain in a second, because that's part of the uh, warp core. Uh, again, aux power, max aux power, uh, very important. It'll help you get up to that 135 hard cap. Uh, there we go, plus 3.3 .3 all damage per subsystem with 75 or more power. That's what the red matter capacitor is for. Uh, right now I'm on ground, so it's saying zero. Uh, when I beam up into space, uh, standard, it'll be set at 6.6, .6, but as soon as I pop that red matter capacitor, it jumps up to maximum. All four systems are above 75. If you really wanted, you could run batteries uh, to help keep a third one up pretty regularly, but... Uh, I honestly don't bother. Uh, the trajectory jump is also super handy, uh, especially because you're going to be using your temporal ability, which is going to jump you back if you take too much damage. So uh, if you get stuck in something like Starbase 1, uh, you can trajectory jump out. It sounds really silly, but it does happen. <laughs> um, also, it makes a really good escape. Uh, if you start taking uh, aggro from too many things, which shouldn't really be an issue if you finish this build out, 
because everything's going to be stuck in your gravity well and there's not really going to be guys surrounding you they're all just going to be bam in the gravity well uh, so earlier on you can use it as an escape but after that it doesn't matter uh, I really want to replace this and the only reason I'm making this video with this wrong component in here is because it is literally impossible right now to get the console that should be in here and that's because it's the console from the legendary crossfield uh, which gives you the um, Lurka Maneuver and the Lurka Maneuver console gives you a buttload of exotic particle generator stat and it has a pretty sweet ability in it I think so uh, in the meantime I'm using the Temporal Rift Stabilizer which does have some cool temporal distortions uh, they're especially effective against larger targets like Voth Dreadnoughts or Planet Killers or whatnot because then all five of them are hitting um, but Right now I'm just using it for the bonus exotic damage. Uh, second, the causal anchor, 15% exotic damage is huge. Uh, exotic critical chance is huge, even just 2%. Um, the anomaly it creates is pretty swank, I think. Uh, I don't bother filling out the set on it though. Uh, next, a whole image refractor is 20% uh, all damage. That includes exotic damage. Uh, plus it's got the temporary hit point ability, which will be proccing when um, you have combinations of certain skills, mastery, DOS abilities, and all that stuff. Uh, you will get occasional heals, and a lot of time you'll be at full health, so getting the temporary hit points is nice. Also, it's a great panic button. Uh, again, if your bolt isn't fully finished, uh, your gravity wall might not expand out to that full 12km uh, radius yet. And uh, you might get guys behind you shooting you, in which case you might start taking a bunch of damage and then you need to pop an emergency panic button and uh, cloak and heal for a bit. But uh, I mostly use it for the 20% all damage and the temporary hit points. Uh, science consoles. Uh, it's obvious I'm running five of the same console. Uh, a lot of people run four of this console and then a fifth uh, either craftable science console or um, just a different... Uh, universal console and that's totally acceptable uh, you don't need five I like five because they just give you a stupid amount of EPG and control each uh, plus each one every time you pop uh, an exotic damage ability that's five separate 25% chances uh, the stack limit does not go up with more consoles the stack limit is still five um, but you're still getting more chances every time you pop an exotic damage ability to get that up faster uh, and it's totally possible you pop one ability and all five go off. Like, you could just build it super quick. Um, and 60% bonus exotic damage is nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, so I really like these. Uh, they're easy to buy. They're from the Fleet uh, Research Station, I believe. Uh, yeah, from the Fleet Research Station. And um, they're very cheap. Um, not a lot of fleet credits, not a lot of dilithium, just build them up and they're beautiful. Uh, I love the Temporal Vortex Probe. That's not the correct amount of exotic damage that's on it. Uh, it's giving you a lie right now because it's because I'm on ground again. But uh, lots of exotic damage, uh, cooldown reduction on temporal abilities, which is phenomenal with the combinations that you're going to see when I show you my uh, starship traits. And the uh, Temporal Vortex is uh, underrated, I think. It does a uh, decent amount of damage, huge area of effect. It's going to hit everything in your gravity well. Uh, retrofitted Assimilator, I run it, again, mostly because of the EPG and the control that's on it. Uh, the Nanite Lace Torpedo is a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of times I'll turn it off of auto, and I'll just launch it every time I see a Dreadnought if I know I'm going to be doing maps with a lot of Dreadnoughts, like... Uh, uh, Peril over Pavo or uh, Draenir Gauntlet. It's it's great to just, oh, there's a Dreadnought. Bam! Nanite Lace Torpedo. Now you have a Dreadnought. <laughs> Lots of fun. Um, Delphic Terror Generator. This is a must have on any science build. 20% bonus exotic damage. Uh, the crit severity is uh, nice too. The radiation damage is uh, decent, uh, I want to say. Um, uh, you have a choice at one point of either taking bonus radiation damage or uh, something else and I decided against radiation damage because this is the only thing on my build that uses radiation but if you want to decide to use more radiation abilities go for it um, and then you can use that ability to enhance that. 
the hangar pets. I have absolutely no hangar buffing abilities on this ship. Uh, I ran the uh, little, they're like Epoch fighters or something on this ship for a while, and I didn't notice them doing anything. They didn't help my science build at all. Uh, I thought of other choices. I thought of Yellowstone runabouts to use tractor beams, but that would just counteract my my uh, gravity wells. There's no way for me to stick anything with torpedo spread on this ship, so the best option I thought was get some shield repair because nothing else on this ship is going to re repair your shields, and you kind of need it. So that was my choice there. Um... Here's where the fun is. Uh, so I'm just going to go one at a time here. Science team, uh, you saw that ability earlier. Every time you pop science team, you get a buff. Uh, I got a duty officer in there to help uh, reduce the cooldown on science team so I can pop every 15 seconds. Also, it's the lowest uh, level science ability that's going to pop for your uh, spore explosions on the trait that I'll show you later. Uh, Titan Swift, I use rank 1 because, honestly, I think it's the best thing that I could fit in there. Uh, I didn't want to stick it on slot 3, because Subspace Vortex is just way better. Uh, definitely spend the money on getting Subspace Vortex. It is the stupidest damage per second anomaly that you could possibly get. It, it is it's absurdly overpowered. I can't even you know uh, continue from there. But uh, tactical theme again for that buff from the the warp core, torpedo spread ex absurdly important to this build. Absurdly, uh, you need it. Anything else won't do. Have to have torpedo spread. Uh, if you are a PVP person and you want to work this into a PVP build, switch it to high yield for PVP. Or if for some reason you uh, are one of those people that like to change your skills, like in the middle of uh, TFO. Um, you could totally switch it, like, uh, at the end of uh, Conduit or something, and just be like, oh, I know I'm fighting a, a big boss now, I'm going to switch to this, and then it's more effective. Uh, engineering team, again, for the buff. Let it go. I love this skill. It's the only engineering uh, anomaly. Well, it's, not, it's technically not an anomaly, but it's one of the only two engineering abilities I know of that are affected by EPG, and so I stick it in there. Uh, structural integrity collapse again affected by your EPG definitely stick it in there um, channel deconstruction I use this for one reason and one reason only and that's to build entropy uh, chronometric inversion this counts as an anomaly believe it or not uh, you can't see it at least not in the midst of everything else going on it's it's pretty uh, benign but it counts as an anomaly which is extremely important for uh, the starship traits that I'll gonna be telling you about later uh, time co timeline collapse, another uh, anomaly, and uh, it's also important to note that these are temporal anomalies, not science anomalies, which will also be important later. If you can have a skill that's both temporal and anomaly, it's giving you uh, double the benefits uh, from your starship traits, not just a single one like Gravity Wall or Tekken's Rift or uh, Slope Space Vortex. And then of course, max rank Gravity Wall, uh, extremely important. Uh, Gravity Wall 3 not only does more damage, uh, per second than Gravity Well 2, but it also has a higher cap on your radius. And uh, the cap on rank 2 is 10 kilometers, and the cap on rank 3 is 12 kilometers. And you're not going to be able to hit that cap if you don't have 3, so you have to get 3. Uh, and then Very Cold in Space, I run this because it's an anomaly. <laughs> um, definitely, uh, if you don't have one from the Winter Event, see if you can uh, buy some, some of the ornaments on the marketplace, which you totally can, and then just buy them yourself, or just you might find one straight up on the market uh, by itself. You can trade them, uh, but they're usually pretty expensive. So do whatever you can to get it. It counts as an anomaly. Uh, plus, it does cold damage, which almost nobody runs resistance against, and it ignores shields. So that's just straight up raw damage. Uh, the flight speed reduction is also pretty swank, I think. It uh, helps slow down enemies, keeps them in your gravity wells, all that fun stuff. So the next important thing we have here is my captain skills. Now a lot of people are surprised about this. I run engineering. <laughs> and the reason I run engineering uh, is one, bonus to auxiliary power systems right there. Uh, 
that plus two is two percent extra damage across the board uh, for all your auxiliary abilities. Uh, second reason is EPS corruption. It's a absolutely phenomenal ability that you can mix with weakening uh, and uh, what's the other one I have on here? Uh, or do I have uh, explosive, explosive and ablative. Those are the two. Uh, explosive, obviously, because everything in your gravity well is going to be close together, so that explosive is going to spread to everything. Uh, and then ablative, because that's going to just uh, increase how much damage over time you do, and it it just makes a great area of effect blast to just wreck everything in your gravity well. Um, science, it's important to get to uh, that um, uh, control resistance. You're already going to have a buttload of control resistance from your control stat, but you want to get it up as high as possible because anytime you get hit by a control, uh, you're going to want to just GTFO, and this is superb for that. Tactical, very important you get here. <laughs> Minus 100%. Can't talk. Uh, Mike Tyson there. Uh, almost 100% threat generation. You practically need it. You're, you're going to be wanting to sit at about 8 to 9 kilometers away from your gravity well uh, to avoid a lot of fire and abilities because the AI will not use certain abilities unless you're so close to them. But uh, reducing your threat generation is going to help a lot. Uh, as far as skills go, I try to spread out skills because when you get towards the end, uh, you get diminishing returns on them. But very important, you get your projectile up all the way because of those gravimetric torpedoes. Um, other important things, you want your improved EPS flow capped out because you're going to get it from very few other sources. Uh, and when you run full impulse, Running full impulse is the only thing that's ever going to drain your EPG, and you want to get that back as quick as possible. But it's not important enough, in my opinion, to warrant a uh, full impulse shunt. Uh, obviously, you're going to want improved control capped out, and you're going to want that control amplification. It's so good. Uh, it just tanks the exotic damage resistance ratings of enemies, and most enemies don't have very much to begin with, so it's just going to erase it and cause them to take stupid amounts of damage. Uh, I don't run drain because the only drain ability that I run is Titan's Rift, and it's only rank 1, so I feel like it's kind of a waste to put it in there. Uh, but definitely, feel free to take out a point of, like, maybe Shield Heart Disc or something and put it in there. Go for it. Uh, nothing important in these ranks. Obviously, you want uh, your EPG capped out. Uh, these engineering abilities are absurdly important uh, to help get those bonuses from that warp core again. Uh, raise all those subsystems up as high as you can. Uh, into the ending trees, again, subsystem power all over the place, highest you can. Uh, engineering readiness, I cap, decided to cap out because uh, those, those two exotic damage abilities that I run on my uh, engineering slot are pretty good. Uh, one of them, after 20 seconds, it reduces their, all their resistance ratings by 120, which is absurd. <laughs> It's, uh, it's over 6 per second for 20 seconds, and it stacks up to 20 times, so it's it's absurd. Uh, also, it's the only one of only two abilities I have that reduce the cooldown on my engineering team, which again, help my buff for using engineering team, get that exotic damage up. Uh, scientific readiness should be obvious. I don't worry about my shields. And I did put one point in detect readiness just because I, I, um, I needed to get that last point up here. Uh, for this uh, threat control, and I felt like um, that was the best place to put it. You know, help reduce the cooldown on my tactical team. Uh, so, uh, with that, we're going to go into traits. Uh, space traits, pretty. Some of them are pretty straightforward. Some of them you might need to buy. Uh, superior astrophysicist, super easy. You can. Most people. Yeah, everybody starts with uh, regular astrophysicist. You can upgrade it if you want at your Fleet K-13 lab. Uh, conservation of energy, uh, really good. Uh, just more, 10% more uh, damage on exotic abilities when hit by energy. Uh, you're going to be drawing a lot of threat even with threat reduction. So uh, every time you get hit, bam. Uh, so much, so much exotic damage bonus. So much, it's great. Uh, particle manipulator. 
absolutely phenomenal skill. Uh, exotic crits are amazing. I love them. Mm, delicious. <laughs> uh, and I can't. I can't really uh, talk it up more than that. It's phenomenal skill. Uh, Fleet coordinator. You should always have this at 10% bonus all damage, running TFOs all the time. There's no reason you shouldn't uh, have this. <laughs> Innocuous, uh, crit severity, just a little bit. Um, and again, minus threat generation, which is nice for the build. Uh, you could swap this out for something else if you want. It's not super important. Uh, starting over again, shield tech, minus 10, or minus, uh, plus 10 shield capacity. Don't need it. It's nice. You could put something else here. Adaptive defense. This one is phenomenal. Oh my god. And it's super cheap right now because it's from the Borg lockbox that's currently out. Buy this while you can. It's stupid cheap. <laughs> 40 damage resist all rating if one thing is targeting you. That's absurdly powerful, which usually you're only getting hit by you know one or two things at a time. Even if you're being hit by four things at a time, 10 damage resist is still nice. Um... Uh, see context is for kings. This is a great one, uh, especially if you're if you're sitting outside really far at that uh, perfect nine kilometer distance from your enemies, and you're just hammering them with all these anomalies, and you're just taking up all this bonus damage every second. It's it caps out at uh, ten ten percent because they only last ten seconds, but ten percent all bonus all damage is phenomenal. So definitely take this if you can. Uh, and projectile training, don't need it. I use it for the torpedoes. Uh, you could put, totally put something else here if you want. Starship traits, these are all phenomenal skills. Uh, improved gravity well, must. Gotta have it. Uh, it's the only way you're gonna have a gravity well out 100% of the time. Uh, with enough cooldown reduction, um, you can get it to 40 seconds. As it says, it cannot be reduced below 40 seconds because that's the... Uh, uh, half-life cap on it, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it increases the duration up to 20, up to 40 seconds, I'm sorry, up to 40 seconds, so you, it's just active all the time, you know, you, it's never gone, it's, you need this, you need this for this build, uh, you cannot run two separate gravity wells, because uh, you're, you're only going to have a few second window at that point, where you're in between gravity wells, and you're basically just going to waste a slot. Um, it's likely that one of the gravity wells is going to be a weaker gravity well anyway, and it's just a mess. You don't want that. You want you need this skill. This is the first thing you need if you want to build this build. Highly specialized. Phenomenal skill. Uh, this works really well with those um, temporal just, uh, anomalies that I was talking about, because every time you pop a temporal anomaly, you get all this crap. Uh, Recharge time reduction on all your temporal abilities. Um, Hull restoration, which is one of the few things that uh, is going to help heal you. Uh, your weapon specialization, which is really going to only matter for your torpedoes. Uh, your weapons aren't usually doing a whole lot of damage with this build, uh, but it does help a little bit. And the most important thing, your EPG. <laughs> uh, and getting plus 50 EPG is pretty swank, trust me. Uh, it's nice. Uh, Spore-infused anomalies. Oh my god, this ability is so much fun. Uh, I can't, it just blows my mind how much fun this ability is. Uh, you got your anomalies going, your your gravity wells on the map, all of a sudden, just everywhere, all the time, explosions, and they do tons of damage. Uh, I've looked at it in combat, I've popped open my menu and looked at it, and uh, it was sitting at about 18 to 20,000 plus uh, damage per shockwave and that's per shockwave per anomaly so you have four anomalies out and you pop any science ability and you're doing like a hundred thousand damage to everything within five kilometers which should be everything on the map because of your gravity well <laughs> this ability is absurdly powerful uh, it's from the Somerville ship you uh, you can do this build without this mastery but this mastery makes this build 10 times more fun than it already is. Uh, now, on to the next one. Uh, exotic modulation. Just plain and simple. Uh, any temporal ability plus 20% bonus exotic damage. 
holy fuck. That is absurd. There's no cap on it, uh, at least according to this. I, I don't think I've actually looked it up. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments, but I do believe that you can just go pop, pop, pop with your temporal abilities and get a crap load of exotic damage. Uh, even if you can't, 20% is still a crap load, so definitely take this. Unstable Anomalies. I would like to replace this one with the Legendary Crossfield, but again, it's impossible to get right now, so I cannot show it off. But uh, this is still a really good ability to use in place of it. Um, all four of those abilities. I have all four of those abilities on this build. So I'm throwing Gravity Wall, I'm throwing Tycoon's Rift, Chronometric Inversion Field, and Timeline Collapse, and they explode and do cubic butt-tons of damage. Uh, also, up to five foes within five kilometers, which is per anomaly. So if you have more than one of these out, it's applying to multiple foes. Uh, does it stack? I have no idea. There's really no way for me to test it. Uh, but loads of kinetic damage. That, that damage reduction is awesome. They're usually not targeting you, but even if they're not, you're helping your team out a buttload by reducing their damage. So this ability is good. Um, it just only applies on the expiration of the anomaly, so it's not always useful. Uh, I would totally replace this with the Legendary Crossfields uh, Gravity Well ability if I could, I just don't have it. Uh, onto the Space Rep. Recharge speed, phenomenal, definitely take it. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but all five of my uh, bridge officers are Krenum <laughs> for the cooldown reduction. So uh, that's just what I suggest. Um, I suppose you could take uh, a Romulan, uh, superior Romulan operative if you wanted, uh, or uh, a hierarchy maybe. I Follow your dreams, I just highly suggest five Krenum. These two are absurdly important, and I'm a little embarrassed uh, to show that uh, I don't have this at rank 2 right now, but uh, this is one of my alt characters, so uh, here you go. <laughs> um, normally these are sitting at uh, about 6.7, 6.6, 6.7, uh, all damage, and that's while I don't have my space bonuses applied. Uh, so once I hit rank 2, this is going to be about plus 10% bonus all damage. Uh, I don't remember the accuracy rating, it's not super important. Um, and then the same thing for Auxiliary Power Config Defense, it's plus 10% um, maximum hit points, plus 10% maximum shield capacity, and the all damage resistance I think goes up to about 20-ish, maybe, it, or is it higher? No, no, it's 22 normally, so it's going to go up to 35-ish uh, uh, once I get it to rank 2. You phenomenal abilities. These outclass every other uh, ability that you're going to get in the game. It's going to outclass anything that increases your shield alone, your hit points alone, your resistance rating alone, your accuracy alone, or your all damage alone. Because you're running that aux so high, it should be at 135 all the time. And it's just absurdly strong. Uh, particle, gener uh, I can't talk. Uh, particle generator amplifier. Uh, great skill. Uh, it's the only one that directly buffs your bonus exotic damage, so take that. Uh, advanced hull reinforcements. You can put whatever you want here. I put this in because I'm using no armor on my ship, <laughs> and this is kind of like my makeshift armor that I'm putting on my ship to uh, to buff that in combination with um, the all damage resist from that. Uh, between these two skills, I get, I think it's 42% uh, all damage resist across the board, somewhere around there. Which is pretty reasonable, I'd, I'd like to say. Just from two skills, I think that's pretty good. Uh, active rep, you're really only going to use uh, anti-tang, uh, anti-time, I really can't talk today. Time entanglement, singularity, does a lot of damage. Like a lot, a lot. Because it's affected by your EPG and your control. But oh my god, does it do so much damage. Uh, if you're pulling a couple battleships or you know some dreadnoughts into a gravity wall, pop this. It will disintegrate them. Uh, the only downside is it's on a cooldown, a pretty long one. Uh, and then some emergency survival abilities just to be there. Uh, if I notice my singularity manipulation uh, pop, 
I'll be like, oh shit, I should probably pop my whole image refractors, and then I'll heal up to full and I'll be fine. Uh, but generally that doesn't happen. Uh, and I honestly don't have enough time to play around with any of these other abilities with my build. I'm, I'm, clicking, uh, I'm clicking abilities in tandem to do certain things, and I just don't have time to, to you know, worry about uh, refracting Tetrion Cascade and pop up another window. It just doesn't happen. Uh, so I don't do it. Like, you know, you could you could put on Chill Generator. I should probably have that on. But, you know, uh, a lot of times when I'm running on ground, uh, I just like to have the little ship around, so I put that on. Follow your dreams. Do whatever you want. Specializations. Uh, final point here in the uh, little tutorial. Uh, I run Intelligence for mostly survivability as my second. Uh, it gives me these uh, shield-facing uh, hardness increases, and it gives me um, uh, uh, extra stealth, which in turn kind of translates to uh, threat reduction. Uh, especially when you're further distance away from your enemies at that uh, nine kilometer sweet spot, uh, and it removes confuses and placates automatically, which is super important because if you get hit with a confuse while you got that gravity well out, I would imagine the horror that would happen on your team. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they would actually suck in teammates and you know space blend them, but uh, if it did, wow, that would suck. Uh, my main is, duh, Temporal Operative, uh, because, duh, <laughs> um, scroll down, scroll down, oh, goddammit, it's not, there we go, uh, there we go, that's it, that's all you need to see, uh, plus 50% EPG, and all the abilities are great, they're, they're all great, take this, your main, always 100%, that's not true. 99% of the time. If you really, 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 really want to, you can main Miracle Worker and second Temporal Operative. It is perfectly good build. Uh, I just prefer uh, the extra shield survivability from Intelligence because that's where all my defense is in my shields. Now for the fun part, I get to go up and show you... Oh wait, hold up. I want to do this on... Uh... I want to do this on advanced. I normally do this on uh, normal because I can kill a larger um, volume of ships faster, and I end up getting more loot that way, but I'm going to switch it to advanced just to show you how effective this crushes ships on advanced. And this totally works on elite too. Like, uh, You have to worry about your survivability a little bit more on elite, but you still totally just obliterate ships on elite. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> good to see you, my uh, yes, good to see you. All right, so obviously first you want to pop the support configuration. That's the main reason why I'm taking this ship, uh, because that's a huge buff to uh, just everything. Look at those shockwaves. See, I can even pop science team and it triggers all those shockwaves. Just any science ability. Look at Space Dorito chilling out there. Come on, get out of red alert. There we go. The only thing with this ship is your EPG level is extremely important. On advanced, a little bit less so, but I usually try to keep it as high as I can by not going into uh, not going into um, full impulse whenever I can. I'm just trying to get out. Oh, there was a. Some of my abilities trigger on cruiser, typically my big AoE ones, because uh, I'm fighting stuff like Elite Star Base 1, and uh, there's no point in having them trigger only on battleships, so I have them set to cruiser. There are a few of them I have set to only battleships, but I typically keep most of the big area of effect ones to cruisers. Alright, 
so let's keep a ticker on this, all right? I am at my nine kilometer sweet spot. And let's just watch the waves come in and go out. Getting a little out of that nine kilometer sweet spot. Just go up a little bit. Chill there. I actually did not want to, I'm glad I didn't hit that. Now, the Titan's Rift is on what's called the startup cooldown with Gravity Wall. So, uh, when you pop either Gravity Wall or Titan's Rift, it starts a 15 second cooldown on the other. And you notice, if, if you look, rewind and look, you'll see my Gravity Wall go from a 1 second cooldown to a 4 second cooldown because it's catching up with that, uh, I wasn't paying attention to where I was throwing my Gravity Wall. Because uh, it's catching up with that uh, startup cooldown on the Titan's Rift. Now, normally you want to throw it when you hit 25 seconds on your gravity well, and that's like the sweet spot. You have a 10 second sweet spot in there to throw your Titan's Rift without it affecting your gravity well at all. And that is a beautiful thing. Alright, all right, so I want these guys to get back here, so I'm going to wait. I'll wait for my gravity well to get back up, so I'm just going to throw some chronometric torpedoes. And then I'm going to throw my gravity wall back here. I'm all gathered up back there again. All these little red ones that are about to pop up, those are all the gravimetric gravity walls, which are, I, they're almost as strong as a regular gravity wall. Uh, only downside is they only last about 10 seconds. back there, get back into that cluster. Okay. Now, uh, if you run into a, a battleship or something, uh, hit your sensor analysis, uh, just to increase how much damage it takes. It's real simple, real quick, right there. Uh, I usually save my uh, let it go for the dreadnoughts or the, 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 big, the big battleships. Obviously, there's no dreadnoughts on this map, so I'm not using it. But just watch all these ships vaporize from all these shock waves. It's really hard to talk and run this build at the same time. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to my uh, rotating cooldowns. Got hit with a viral impulse first. But they're all dead anyway. So you can see just how absurdly uh, strong that is. And uh, it works exactly like that in Elite Defense Starbase 1, uh, Counterpoint, any, any big map where there's lots of ships. It is so much fun to play and just watch ships spin around in a freaking space blender. I love it to death. And uh, with that, I will pop open my ship stats real quick for everybody to take a look at real quick. You can see uh, my attacks. Uh, obviously, I don't really have anything in, in crits. Uh, aside from my exotic crit hit and crit damage, which I don't think applies to this. And all this good stuff right here. I actually didn't think my shield capacity was that high until just now. Huh. Um, yeah, you can see my resist ratings. Uh, they're pretty decent with just those two skills. Um, So yeah, uh, with that I will conclude the video. Uh, feel free to follow my channel for future videos, and have a good one.